what your cybersecurity role says about you. Security Analyst, also known as SOC Analyst, also affectionately put down as the help desk of cybersecurity. This is as entry level as cybersecurity can get. If consistently asking for the CISSP and 10 years of experience was considered entry level, this is the person drowning in alerts all day, living off of cold pizza and cold coffee in a basement or smelly security operations center somewhere. If a security breach were a party, the security analyst would be the janitor cleaning up beer cans and puke at 3 a.m. Security analysts are typically one of two things. Excited to finally be in a cybersecurity position. Eager to please, they've got that happy to be here energy mixed with mild to severe anxiety. They'll say things like, I love learning, but Jesus, I didn't expect this many alerts. They're known to have reflexes like a cat. Not for identifying true positives though, but for jolting awake whenever an alert goes off in the middle of the night. Or they're burnt out to all living hell. Having tickets notes that went from full essays to it's fine we get these alerts all the time false positive they're vigilant jaded and perpetually caffeinated they can down an energy drink and still immediately take a nap there's no in between the two states of being a security analyst online you'll find them asking is it supposed to be this boring or flexing about how they caught a malicious ip at 2 a.m which they won't admit later was actually just the company printer reaching out for an update they live between imposter syndrome and the all-knowing tech guru depending on the day optimistic bordering on delay Illusion. They genuinely believe next week the alert volume will go down. It won't. The detection engineers have actually put in more indicators, which will generate even more alerts. Bless their hearts. Security analysts are the golden retrievers of InfoSec. If you enjoy a routine of constant paranoia sprinkled with occasional panic, you might be this person chugging caffeine and dreaming of the day they'll be promoted to one of the other wonderful roles we're about to cover. Coming in hot at number two, the penetration tester, aka the ethical hacker. This is the pseudo rock star of the cyber world, at least in their own mind. These people walk around acting like a self-proclaimed savant, a computer ninja with an adrenaline junkie complex. These folks live in hoodies, talk in memes, and have more stickers on their laptop than they have friends. Pen testers typically have over the top confidence. They'll stroll into a client's network like, I'm in. Because of course, they say that unironically. They love to mention that they use all the tools available in Kali Linux like it's a religion. If you listen close, so you can hear them whisper, in Cali we trust, before running Nmap. They give off vibes of, I get paid to break in. Stereotypes? Oh boy. They're the ones on Reddit bragging about how they got their OSCP and rooted 50 bucks is unhack the box, bro. Easy. They collect exploit scripts like Pokemon and casually drop CVE references in Discord chats to feel superior. A pen tester will do bug bounties for fun with a sense of humor that can be summed up as cyanide and happiness because dark humor and insist that anything can be solved with a script and a shell. They've got a wee bit of a superiority complex. In their view, everyone else in cybersecurity is just living in their world. But hey, somebody's got to wear the guy folks mask at Halloween, right? The threat hunter. Think of them as the big game hunters of cyber jungles. Think paranoid detective meets adrenaline sleuth. These are the folks who voluntarily dig through logs without an alert telling them to. Who hurt you? They wake up and choose spontaneous investigative chaos, hunting elusive threats like it's cyber CSI. Threat hunters have some interesting quirks. They'll see two failed logins and a suspicious PowerShell process and immediately weave a wild theory about nation state hackers infiltrating the cafeteria vending machine, pivoting to a wireless access point where they exploited a vulnerability in the CLI that allowed them to reconfigure the ACLs and get into the corporate network where they- Who thinks of this stuff? They practically sleep in Yara rules and Sigma detections. For fun, they read threat intel reports. Ugh. The same way other people eat up the latest drama, they're like, Oh my god, did you hear about APT28 has a new malware strain? This is nuts! Their motto is basically trust no one, suspect everyone. Yes, they're one tinfoil hat away from starting an Illuminati of InfoSec. You'll see threat hunters brag about their latest find like they just bagged a 10 point buck. I hunt down a malicious Chrome extension no one noticed. They'll post in LinkedIn awaiting applause that never comes. Just silly little LinkedIn reactions and comments like, nice work, Greg. Conversations with these people will have so many acronyms, IOC, TTP, APT, that you'd think they were on an episode of Cybersecurity Sesame Street. Threat hunters are analytical, suspicious, and love 
a good hunt. If you're the type of person who casually brings up ransomware strains at dinner and keeps a whiteboard of unsolved network mysteries, well, you might be a threat hunter. Incident Responder, the digital firefighter of our list. These adrenaline-fueled champs run toward the metaphorical fire while everyone else in management is busy having a meltdown. Calm, under pressure, with the sight of, I haven't slept since the last breach. They're the friend you call in a crisis, but also the friend who's oddly bored when things are peaceful. Emotionless sociopaths? The Jeffrey Dahmer of the cyber world, except they use their emotionless powers for good. Incident responders have a go bag at all times, but instead of a first aid kit, it's loaded with the forensic laptop, write blockers, and probably a fidget toy. They'll drop what they're doing, drop their microwave burrito at the sound of, we've been breached, and leap into action like an over-caffeinated, sleep-deprived lemur. Don't ask how I come up with these comparisons. I'm, I'm a strange person. These quirky folks are a curious mix of hypervigilant and oddly zen. One minute they're calmly saying, all right team, let's isolate the effect systems. And the next minute they're yelling at 3 a.m. Who clicked the phishing link? I must find a source of intrusion, show yourself and feel my wrath. In the cybersec community, they're referred to as the department of digital oh shit. Because when they show up, Something smelly has definitely hit the fan. They trade war stories online like battle-scarred veterans. Remember the great ransomware all-nighter of 2023? Ah, uh, yeah. Good times, good times. If you have a heroic savior complex, a phone that never leaves your side, don't we all, and the ability to function on 0.2 hours of sleep, five shots of espresso, and some zen, Incident Responder is your spirit animal. The Red Teamer, basically a pen tester who leveled up their stealth stats and got a license to LARP as a supervillain. If you're a Red Teamer, you act like a part spy, part internet troll, but full of trouble. The good kind, hopefully. These are the folks who literally pretend to be the janitor to sneak into a building or send phishing emails to their own colleagues for the lulls, but claim it's for training purposes. Sure it is, Frank. Cunning and competitive. They have inside jokes like zero days for days and defenses for those who can't hack it. They often develop a slight split personality, bipolar people, if you will. By day, they're your colleague. By night, they're literally devising evil ways to break into your accounts, prove they could steal your trophy collection if they wanted to, all with management's blessing. If that sounds insane, it's because it kind of is. And they love it. They thrive on it. Because you truly have to be partially or fully insane to do this. Red Teamers flex about how they pwned their client's AD without being detected, sharing photos of the fake badges they use to get into the headquarters. Their toolkit is the stuff of spy movies, literally. They actually own lockpick sets, RFID D cloners and maybe a grappling hook. M maybe not that last one, but probably I'd, I wouldn't be surprised. Walking around with a bit of an evil genius vibe, but with a heart of gold. Since hey, they're on our side for now. They're the kind of coworker to throw a Nerf gun party in the office to celebrate a successful engagement. If your idea of fun is outsmarting your friends and leaving secret notes like gotcha bit on the CEO's desk, congrats your red team material. Just don't let it get to your head. Remember, humility is the path to wisdom and oodles of money. And arrogance is the path to ignorance. Don't be an ass. Meet the security engineer. Bob the cyber builder, the fixer, the one who says, hold my bear, I'll script this. I don't know why he's Southern. Part mad scientist, part overworked handyman, part closeted alcoholic. These are the folks who automate their morning coffee with a script and consider a day successful if they've eliminated three manual processes before lunch. Perfectionism with a side of snarkiness. Security engineers can't stand sloppy configurations. They'll redo your entire cloud setup at 2 a.m. because it pissed them off and they couldn't sleep thinking about it. You know the meme, I can fix that. That's basically their life motto. I can automate that. Did an open source tool not quite meet their needs? They'll just write a new one from scratch. Post it on GitHub and casually drop the link in the Teams chat like, no big deal, I built a custom integration connected via API overnight, please use it. They talk in code, literally, in meetings, instead of saying, we have a problem, they'll say something like, the configuration deployment failed with error code 32117 due to an exception in the script on line 42. I'll patch it by end of day. They get irrationally excited about things like zero trust security and infrastructure as code. Online, security engineers are the ones giving detailed answers with code snippets and then complaining about people not reading documentation as they provide links to the documentation. They have a slight god complex when their solutions work. Behold, I have hardened the system. It's in 
impenetrable. You may shower me with praise now, but also will rage delete their own code when a bug is found. Who wrote this garbage? Oh yeah, it was me. Stupid, stupid. stupid. If you think solving puzzles, fixing other people's messes, and have the patience to explain for the hundredth time why default security configurations are not okay, you're probably this person. Just don't forget to take a break to sleep occasionally. Your code and sanity will thank you. Governance, risk, and compliance analyst. The GRC analyst. The hall monitor of cybersecurity. I can't think of a better analogy. If roles were a high school, GRC is the teacher's pet reminding everyone of the rules. Detail-oriented, rule lover, perhaps a closeted bureaucrat who somehow finds genuine joy in frameworks and audit checklists. Yes, these people exist, apparently making a shit ton of money too. GRC folks are the ones saying, actually that's against policy. Article 3, Section 9, when you try to deploy something fun. Their catchphrase, can you document that? They wield acronyms like weapons. According to GDPR, I say, I say 27,001 by NIST standards. You half expect them to start reciting passages from the PCI DSS like gospel to everyone around them. Absolute devotion to compliance. They have nightmares about failing an audit, waking up in a cold sweat screaming, We forgot section 5.2! They may or may not entirely love to color code risk matrices and use the word holistic unironically. They have a spreadsheet for everything. In chat, they drop in like, Hey guys, did everyone do their mandatory training? I noticed two of you are overdue. Known in the cybersecurity space as the cybersecurity security fun police. They might not hack stuff or code, but boy will they write you up for not encrypting that USB drive. But they do offer some serious meticulous reliability. They're the reason the company isn't getting sued into oblivion. So while a pen tester might poke fun at GRC for not being technical, the GRC analyst is probably thinking, laugh all you want, smart ass, but fill out my three page risk assessment first. If you have a notebook collection, a love for order, and take satisfaction each time you bring a company up to compliance, you might be this person. Finally, we have reached the top of the food chain. The CISO, which, as the jokes go, sometimes stands for Chief Information Scapegoat Officer. Leader-like, with a sprinkle of hyper-fixated paranoia and a double shot of stress, the CISO is the one with the target on their back. If anything major goes wrong, their head is on the chopping block. No pressure, right? A stereotypical CISO has two modes, boardroom polished and internal, oh no, we're f on the outside, they're giving cool presentations about cyber risk posture and aligning security with business objectives, using fancy buzzwords that make the execs nod in unison. On the inside, they're thinking, if one more f***ing critical vulnerability appears, I'm gonna flip this table. They perfected the art of saying a lot without promising anything. Ever notice how a CISO never says, we are 100% secure? It's always, we are secure enough, given the ever-evolving threat landscape. Which is CISO speak for, we're one phishing email away from full company-wide compromise, Bob. Many CISOs are former tech literate folk who now suffer from making too much money. They reminisce about the good old days of hands-on work while approving budgets and putting out executive fires. They also have the uncanny ability to appear calm during a breach call with the CEO, then immediately join a call with just the security team and say, what the f happened and why? They network like crazy because let's be honest, a strong network is your lifeline when you might need a new job post breach. There's a reason CISOs have such a high turnaround rate, folks. Writing LinkedIn posts about leadership in cyber or on Reddit cautioning newbies, being a CISO takes a special breed of person. Strategic, thick skinned, and probably a workaholic. They're the diplomat balancing tech and business management and somehow still find time to forward memes about password strength. If you're an overachiever who thrives under absurd pressure and can handle knowing that any breach could make you infamous, then hey, aim for CISO. Just remember, keep your resume updated just in case. Oh.